OpenAI has just opened access to two of its hottest APIs, ChatGPT and Whisper. While the first one needs no introduction, Whisper is a sophisticated speech-to-text interface. This means that now you can query ChatGPT not through their website, but using a computer program you've created. And you don't need a keyboard anymore you can talk to it. They come together as one press release because OpenAI obviously emphasizes the fact that using both these APIs together, you can right now say build a smartphone app that will make all the other smart assistants on the market obsolete. The best part is that using these APIs requires minimum possible effort, literally 20 to 40 lines of code and you have a working prototype. Let me show you. How do you feel about putting pineapple on a pizza? As an AI language model, I don't have personal preferences or feelings like humans. However, many humans have different opinions about pineapple on pizza. Some people love it while others don't like it. It's all a matter of personal taste. So here is our interaction with ChatGPT using our voice and the interface that we will build within the next 5 minutes. Okay, so to start interacting with OpenAI products via API, you need an API key. And you can go to the platform.openai.com into your account and here you can see view API keys. You can generate this key and you need to pass it over to your program. So we've got two models to query. The first one that is going to transform our voice into text and the second one that is going to send that text to ChatGPT and receive a reply. So let's start with the first one that is going to transform the voice into text. In the documentation here you can find speech to text and here is one complete example. And this is basically all you need to transform a voice file into a text file. And before this can work, we have to import an API key. So I've created this config.py file where I've defined an API key within a constant. Within our program, we are going to import this config and uh, import the key from there. And as you can see, GitHub Copilot is already suggesting everything that we need. So OpenAI API key is going to be the key that is in our config. I've got an example file on my desktop that we want to transcribe. Let me play this for you. This is a sample file I've just recorded. All right, and let's see how this is going to be transcribed. So we're just going to provide the path to this file, uh, to this API call. And uh, let's just execute our program. Okay, so here we can see that this is a sample file I've just recorded. So we have sent our audio file to the OpenAI Whisper API and received back a transcript. Now this transcript can then be fed to the ChatGPT API as a question, for instance. So let's just wrap this into a function that we can call it within a certain step within our program. And I've got it here, and it's basically the same thing. The only difference is that I'm returning not the whole transcript, but the text portion of it. So as you can see, the transcript is a dictionary, and uh, with the key text, we've got the message that had been transcribed. As you can see, this is very simple, basically just nine lines of code to take advantage of the Whisper API from OpenAI. Now let's see how we can interact with ChatGPT API. If you go back to the documentation here, and chat completion section and here is a complete example of a query to chat gpt let's just copy this and uh, we'll expand on that so let's just quickly look at this so through openai we query chat gpt completion method and uh, this is the model that we're using gpt 3.5 turbo which is the latest one that came with this release and here we've got our messages first message here is going to set up the system to respond in a certain way. So here we can see that the role is system and the content is what we're actually asking ChatGPT in the beginning of our conversation. You are a helpful assistant. Other things you can say here, you are a math professor or you are a photographer. This will set the context so ChatGPT would answer in a certain way. And this is your first question. Who won the World Series in 2020? These are the examples of replies it provides. So let's just, let's ask this question. Let's return response into a variable response and we'll print our response at the end. Python, chat, give it a second. Okay, as you can see, this is provided a dictionary with a lot of information in here and our response is here under the messages and content. And it says Los Angeles Dodgers won the World Series in 2020. We probably don't want any of this information in our response. We can extract from this dictionary key choices, then the first element from the list because it's a list, then messages or message and then content. And as you can see, our response is exactly the information that we want. And this is yet another simple example of querying open AI products. From the previous step, we have transformed the voice into text. We take the text as a question and pass it over to the ChatGPT API here in the content of this dictionary. 
and receive our reply. Now we'll take both these parts and combine them into one single program. As an interface that is going to record our voice and output the information back on the screen, we're going to create a simple web service based on GRadio library. Let's have a look. We go to GRadio documentation and select Quick Start. There is a very simple example here that will create a web service on a local host which you can then access via your browser. So we'll just copy this demo example and let's create a web service. We're not going to change anything for now. Let me just show you how this default web service is going to look like. All we need to do is just run this program with Python. Okay, now you can see it's running on localhost. You can just copy this address here and paste it into your Chrome browser. And here you've got this interface. It's got two fields, input and output. So let's say name. This is my name. And after we submit, this is the logic that it executes. It just says, hello, name, hello, Daniel. All right. And this logic is encoded here in this greet function. First thing we need to do is change the input from text to voice. And then we need to extend this function here that is going to execute the logic to take the voice, transcribe it into text, then take the text, send it to ChatGPT, receive a reply and print it back to you in this output field. So in order to change the text interface to audio interface, all we need to do is change this one line of code like this. And a few more things we want to change here. I mean, this argument can be named whatever you want, but, uh, but just for it to be clear, we want to say audio here because the audio is what we're working with. And uh, we want to return audio so that we can see what is going to return here in the output box. As you can see that instead of the text here, now we have record from microphone. And uh, let's give it a spin. Check one, two, one, two. If you remember, we are returning audio here. So in the output, it returns the path to the file that it has saved on the system, to the audio file that we have just recorded. And you remember, we've been sending an audio file to the Whisper API to receive a transcript. Now we want to take this audio file, use the function that we've created to query the Whisper API and send this audio file to Whisper to receive back the transcript. Copy everything and then let's paste it back in here. Uh, here is our speech to text function and the audio that we have captured we want to send to speech to text and receive back a transcript. So we're going to say transcript equals speech to text audio. And here we want to return transcript. We're going step by step because actually in the end we're going to return something else. But let's just check each increment quickly. So I'm going to stop running the program, run it once again, refresh, check 1212, submit. Okay, very good. Check 1212. So this is already the output from the Whisper API. Now we want to send this to the ChatGPT API as a question and receive back a reply. Basically, we are replicating what a ChatGPT website does only with audio interface. Going back to our program and I've put that example that we have used when playing with ChatGPT API into a separate function as well. Now this requires some attention. If you recall, this is the format of the message that has to be sent. And we have to send a list with dictionaries inside. Now let's just copy it and put it up here in our script. The only thing we're going to keep in the messages is just the first dictionary that is going to set the context of how this assistant is going to speak to you. You're more than welcome to change the context the way you like. Say, respond as if you were a rapper Snoop Dogg. Okay, pass it as a global to our main function. And after we receive our transcript, we want to add to the messages one more dictionary with a role of user and a content has to be this transcript. So let's just do that. And again, GitHub Copilot is incredibly smart. And now this messages object, we want to pass to query chat GPT like this. And we want to return response message. Run the program again. In one sentence, how would you sum up internet? Yo, the internet be connecting us all, bringing knowledge and fun to every single computer and smartphone. I can hear Snoop Dogg talking. Okay, so this is already very good. We're using our voice to query ChatGPT and all of this is happening through APIs and we can see this in the interface. But if we ask another question, what is the weirdest smell you ever smelled? We don't see the context of our previous conversation, so this is not exactly a chat. ChatGPT remembers through this session the context, but it's just we don't see this because our program does not print this for us. So let's correct this quickly. After we receive our response, Again, we want to append to the messages and since this is a global variable, every message that is going to be created within this conversation is going to be appended to this variable. We just need to print this correctly in the output field. Now we have our context that is set as a Snoop Dogg replying to our questions. We are importing these messages into our program at the beginning. We are creating a transcript from the speech 
then we're appending to the messages of uh, this context as the question. Then we're receiving the reply from ChatGPT and we're again appending to the messages but only now the role is the assistant because this is a reply from ChatGPT. And if we return messages to the output, it's going to be this ugly dictionary with all these keys and values. We want to parse this into a string. So here we start with an empty string and we iterate over all the messages or all the objects within this messages list. And then we're just concatenating to the output the role, so who is saying, and the actual message, what, what they're saying. Since we're using our voice to ask questions, it would be great to receive our answers verbally as well in addition to this text right here. All we need for that is to import subprocess and we want subprocess to save this message with the system voice on our machine. And this is the command for that, just one line of code. If peanut butter wasn't called peanut butter, what would it be called? I wonder what Snoop Dogg has to say about this. Yo, 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 it's the D-O-double-G and I'm here to assist. If peanut butter had another name, it might leave you pissed. But let me hit you with a rhyme, and you might just agree. We could call it nut paste, or maybe legume spread. Can't you see? No matter what it's called, it's still delicious on toast. So grab a jar and spread it thick, and give your taste buds a roast. If animals could talk, which would be the rudest? Yo, 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 it's the S-N-double-O-P. If animals could talk, which would be the rudest? Let me see, I gotta say, a cat would probably be the sassiest, they'd be giving you lip and acting so classy, but a goose, now that's a different story, they're already honking and squawking, all out and gory, so if animals could talk, these two might be the rudest, but I'll still talk to them, even if they're the crudest. These are two great poems, free from copyright by the way, for now. As you can see this is very simple, only 40 lines of code. It's not a product yet, but it's a great prototype on top of which you can build anything you want. So there you have it. API access to the hottest technology on the market. At your fingertips. Code away.